That was not his gun, boy. Don't be so scared. Don't run, 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 run. 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 That was a crowd of people helping a suspect escape from New York City police this week, the same day a teen violently attacked officers trying to stop him from jumping the subway turnstile. Let's welcome to the show retired NYPD officer Bill Stanton. Bill, great to have you. I just want to start with your thousand foot view on what's happening, not just here in New York City, but other Democrat run cities across the country. Crime is running rampant right now. We see images like this, videos like these almost daily. Jackie, this is literally the inmates running the asylum, where you have these radical-minded uh, prosecutors, politicians that live in the cyber world that put out these radical positions to get a couple of likes. But in the real world, you know, the people they say they want to protect, the black and brown people, those are the primary victims of these crimes, where it's okay to fight a cop and help the bad guy get at the cop, I feel like we're in a bad Mad Max movie. I know, that is what it feels like. And I have to tell you, that is exactly the analogy I've used as I walk around New York City and I watch what's going on around me. Um, having said that, on Fox & Friends this morning, a former Army Ranger Special Forces op, Tim Ken Kennedy, was talking about what the, what the problem is with the defund movement, with where our police stand in this country. I just want you to take a listen to this. Your job is to be able to protect those behind you and to, to even protect the person that you're maybe trying to arrest. When I tell officers that are coming to our, to our training, I tell them that no help is coming, no one's coming to save you, no one's gonna fight for you. You have to prepare for that. We've been emasculating our police officers. The defund police movement has absolutely gutted any, any form of funding police training. If you don't have the tools and you have to use escalation of force to get them into cuffs, then what use are you to the society that you're supposed to be serving. Sir, your reaction to that, I talk to NYPD officers all the time who tell me essentially their hands are tied, they can't do their jobs, and that's why situations like this arise, um, because they escalate, but basically it's it's sort of um, the, the, this movement that has taken over, the ideology that the criminals understand, as you said, that they can run around and do whatever they want without consequence. Hoorah to that ranger, I, I agree 100%. Between the no the no bail uh, the no bail laws, between the new uh, non compression, even if you grab a perpetrator by mistake while you're fighting and you put any compression in the diaphragm area, in many cities and states across America, you can not only be fined, you could be prosecuted and go to jail. So what's happening? Are well, these cops who are reluctant now to take any action when they take act, take action? They're not fighting to save their life. They're fighting in their mind to save their job. And what that does, it puts them and their partners in danger. And cops are dying because of this, in my opinion. And the people they're sworn to protect and serve are suffering, Jackie. Yeah, and you bring up the issue of the DAs. For example, here in New York City, Alvin Bragg, he was uh, voted in to office. Um, Mayor Adams speaks about crime frequently. He gets up on the podium a lot and denounces what's happening in the city. And part of the reason he was voted in was to clean things up. Um, but he says he can't do it because the DA isn't prosecuting the crimes and, and bringing them down with respect to the charges and the offenses and putting violent criminals back on the street. Many people say, well, Mayor, Mayor Adams, you know, put pressure on him to resign or Governor Hochul remove him, but that's not happening. So we're sort of in this deadlock area right now. What do you think happens in cities like ours? Well, what you're seeing is the political class passing the buck because nobody wants to put uh, their political future on the line while our cops' lives are on the line. And what's happening, what we're seeing pervasively throughout law enforcement is cops are finally understanding that I'm going to go to jail if I do yeah. what I was sworn to do. Exactly. So they make the same paycheck no matter what. A cop never got in trouble for crime going down. I mean, they get in trouble when crime goes down because that means they're fighting crime. If crime goes up, they don't get in trouble. So yeah. they're going to get that check no matter what happens. And that's what I'm afraid of. And basically what the officers tell me is that they just don't want to get in the fray. They don't want to take on that kind of liability. That's the situation that they're in. And not only do you have tons of people retiring from the force, but you've got young people saying, why do I want to go into this profession? Why on earth would I want to do this? Um, and they have a point. Bill Stanton, good to see you tonight. Thank you.